And so now I'm going to talk a little bit about why the French ended up not winning the war in North America. Um, and there, there are two, two things I'm going to talk about with this. And one is, first of all, the Battle of Quebec. And the Battle of Quebec, and this, this was a, a, another time where the, now the French are entrenched in the city of Quebec, which is a big, beautiful fortress in Canada, and the English are going to attack. And Montcalm, the officer who's in, the general who's in charge of the, the French army in North America, he really should have just sat tight and waited for reinforcements because there were other French officers in the field. There were Canadians he could have waited for who would have helped him. But he didn't sit tight and wait. He wanted to go out and meet the English on the Plains of Abraham. So when he went out to meet the English on the Plains of Abraham, uh, he did not have enough troops, um, and they were not well enough organized. He was trying to use lots of Canadian militiamen to fight like French soldiers standing in that line and firing, which is not how the Canadians are used to fighting. Uh, and, and it was a, a, a very large, very important battle in which both he, uh, General Montcalm, and the British general, General Wolfe, died. And because it was a very big, uh, uh, exciting, engaging, even sexy battle, a lot of people look at that battle and see that was the loss of France in North America which isn't quite the case, and I'll explain why in a second. But first, since we're talking about the deaths of Montcalm and Wolfe, uh, which were very uh, well publicized uh, in Europe, I wanted to take the opportunity to show you some interesting uh, pictures of that. And the first thing to, um, I'd like to show you is this wonderful portrait of the death of General Wolfe. And this is a portrait, um, it was very popular, it was, it was painted a few years after he died. And if you look at the portrait, you can see that General Wolfe is dying very beautifully. And he's able to do it without, even though he's been shot several times, he's able to do it without shedding any blood. He's just dying very beautifully. And he's surrounded by, by, by his men. And you can see that there's an Amerindian warrior. This represents that his allies, his Amerindian allies, you know, sitting there looking at him. And everyone looks very sad and very resigned, and they're very upset. And you can see the battle on the plains of Abraham for Quebec being waged in the background. And if you look very closely, there's a man standing right here towards the, the very edge of the picture. And he hold, he's holding a flag, and he's holding his hat out, and he's running. And essentially, what he's, he's coming, he's coming to deliver the news to Wolf that you have won the battle. And Wolf died knowing that he had won the battle, which, I don't know, maybe it made dying a little better, maybe not. But it probably didn't look like this. And now, this picture and this portrait is not supposed to be a literal uh, snapshot of what Wolf's death looked like. And so, because we're so used to, to, to photographs and things in our culture, sometimes we look at things and think that's exactly what it was. And this is not exactly how it happened, but this is how it's using symbols and it's using you know, specifically placed people in order to kind of tell you something about Wolf, tell you something about the battle, tell you something about uh, the glory in which he died because he died winning for the King of England and all these lovely things. There's also a similar portrait done for the death of Montcalm. Um, which is lovely, and it's right here. Oop. And it's a little sitting funny in its frame, but that's all right. And this is very, it's not gonna, there we go. Okay, and this is, is very similar, and uh, that's a very similar pose. And here we, get, we have Montcalm dying beautifully. No blood, but he's dying beautifully. He's surrounded by his men who are crying for him and they're weeping for him. And uh, you can see you have two Amerindians here in the lower corner, and they're burying a mortar. Or actually, they're uh, not burying it. They're taking it out of the ground. The bomb fell into the ground and blew up, and so they're taking the, the, the empty shell out of the crater that it created. And this is kind of a, a nod to the fact that Montcalm was buried in a crater hole. Um, and it's also, again, making an acknowledgement of the Amerindian allies who fought with the French in the Seven Years' War. Um, and then you see other funny things in this picture, like a palm tree. <laughs> now, does that mean that the French thought that there were palm trees in northern Canada? No, it does not mean the French thought there were palm trees in northern Canada, because remember, this is more of a metaphor. And one of the symbols for America, because America was initially discovered in the Caribbean and in the South, one of the symbols of North America is this bizarre looking tree. So this palm tree is in the picture, not because there are palm trees in Northern Canada, but just to kind of give people who are looking at the picture a certain sense of place, that this is a, this is a North American setting. And you also see way, way, way in the back, right here, you see kind of an outline of this portrait of the death of General Wolfe. And this is because, again, it was so beautiful and so dramatic. The two generals of the armies die in combat during the battle for Quebec. Oh, it is so beautiful and romantic. And we tend to think of this as the end of the Seven Years' War in North America. But the end of the Seven Years' War in North America really happened off the coast of Brest, off the coast of France, um, in the Battle for Quiberon Bay. 
And the Battle of Quiberon Bay was a naval battle. Um, and essentially, you have a, a large French fleet, which is coming out of Brest in France. And if you, if you Google map Quiberon Bay, you'll, you'll get to see it. And you can see a lovely map of it. And as the, the French fleet is exiting, it's met by the British fleet. And they fight. And it's just not the French day. Uh, the British fleet pretty much takes out most of the French ships. A couple remain, but most of them are, are, are sunk uh, or, or just put into a position where they, they are no longer useful for sailing at the moment. And the British fleet hardly has anything happen to it. And this is huge. Now remember, this is a global war. The French are fighting this war in India. They're fighting this war in Europe. They're fighting this war in North America. They're fighting it in the Caribbean. They're fighting it on the seas. They're fighting it everywhere. So in order to supply the army, in order to, give, to, to get orders from Paris to, um, uh, to North America, you need the Navy. And the Navy has to be able to navigate the seas very well. So if the French essentially lose the bulk of their Navy, they're just not going to be able to give the help to North America that, North Ameri that, the, that the French troops in North America would need. So the French didn't necessarily have to lose North America, North America with the Battle of Quebec, but really the fact that they no longer had a navy that they could use to supply, to give communications to North America, meant that the French, just decide, the French state decided to let North America, leave, let, let it be on its own, let it fight its own battle. If they keep it, they can keep it. If they lose it, they lose it. But the French, they just do not have the resources at this moment to supply and to communicate with North America. And that the Battle of Quiberon Bay really is kind of like the, 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 the nail in the coffin uh, for the French presence in North America.